So what is the probability of a simple cell evolving by undirected natural processes? The probability of a single protein being formed by undirected natural processes is only 1 in 10 to the 164th power. That's 10 with 164 zeros following it. That's pretty big. The probability of life, a simple cell evolving by undirected natural processes, is 1 in 10 to the 340 millionth power. That is unimaginable. Here's an illustration to help demonstrate just what this means. Here we have one tiny grain of sand. It's been estimated that there are one million grains of sand in a half a cup. It would take one million half cups of sand to fill a swimming pool that's six feet deep and 30 feet in diameter. Now, if we took one billion of these pools of sand, we could fill Lake Tahoe in Nevada, which is about 22 miles long and 12 miles wide. Think you could find that original grain of sand we started with? We're not done yet. It would take about one billion Lake Tahoes to fill the volume of the Earth with sand. The probability of grabbing that original grain of sand out of the Earth filled with sand is 1 in 10 to the 30th power. It would take 100 million Earths to fill one sun with sand, and 1 trillion suns to fill our solar system, 10 trillion solar systems to fill one cubic light year, 100 trillion cubic light years to fill the volume of the Milky Way galaxy, and finally 10 billion Milky Way galaxies to fill the observable universe. Whew. That is a lot of sand. The probability of now randomly picking our original grain of sand from the entire observable universe is 1 in 10 to the 96th power. Still a far cry from our protein being formed at 1 in 10 to the 164th power, and even less chance of life evolving from undirected natural processes at the probability of 1 in 10 to the 340 millionth power. Starting to get the idea? Scientists generally consider anything with a probability of less than one part in 10 to the 70th power operationally impossible. And by the way, that calculation doesn't take into consideration the information that's stored in the cell, which directs the cell in all aspects of operation. That estimate is solely the chance of chemicals combining to form something living. So, the chance of life evolving and retaining the information needed to replicate itself is astronomically smaller than anything we know. And that's only one organism. Think about what it would mean for millions of complex organisms to have evolved from an undirected natural process. According to information science, the probability is so small that it's deemed operationally impossible. So, knowing all of this, should the popular scenarios of chemical and biological evolution be taught globally as the only explanation of the origin of life and species? It's my belief that we're not opening our minds to the possibility of other explanations. Now, one of the most basic concepts you should have learned is that if observations and data contradict the theory you're testing, then the theory should be modified or abandoned. Unfortunately, this doesn't seem to be happening to the present, most popular model of origins. Instead, many scientists are trying to take information and make it fit the evolutionary models. But is that good science? Critical thinking is required to realize the information science aspects of this and to make sure that whatever scenarios you're coming up with do not violate the principles of information science. Too often, scientists, they believe that information can be generated by physical processes, and that simply is not true. Functional information cannot be generated from purely physical properties. Sigmund Freud once said, from error to error, one discovers the entire truth. As we examine history, we are constantly reminded of our ever-evolving thoughts in science. 
We look at the ideas of the earth being flat or being the center of the universe or the cell being the simplest component of life. And while these theories seemed promising at the time, we have discovered they are completely incorrect. As we learn more about this amazing world in which we live, we start to understand the complexity of its workings. And in the case of the cell, the more we research, the more complex it seems to be. As we gather information, it is up to us as scientists, students, and colleagues to bring science to a level of integrity and critical examination that it deserves. If we approach science with an unsupported prearranged bias, then what we're trying to accomplish is not really science at all. The beauty of science is that we're able to move away from accepted dogma to examine the evidences. It's not up to us to disprove a given theory. It's up to the theory to prove itself against the laws of science. If a theory fails to do this, then it should be rejected, and we should search for more knowledge in order to, as Sigmund Freud said, discover the entire truth. The possibility of life evolving using the known laws of chemistry and physics is operationally impossible. When we consider the laws of information, that possibility now becomes impossible. Meaningful prescriptive information cannot arise from nothing, no matter how much time you allow. And until we acknowledge this, we will never discover the origin of life. Thank you for joining me on this amazing journey through science and the programming of life. I would challenge you to examine the evidences and join the growing community of critical thinkers. Until next time.